Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt and today we are making a DIY glycol system. I have mine right behind me here and I built this for under $50. If you like content like this, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and also check out my channel for other DIY videos as well. If you're unfamiliar of what a glycol chiller is, it's essentially just an insulated box that has some cooling coils in it that keeps glycol cool. Then you could take a pump and pump that cold glycol through your fermenter to keep then your beer cold. This will help you with lager fermentations or cold crashing beers after fermentation is completed. You might also need a glycol chiller if you live in a hotter climate, because in hotter climates, it might be more difficult to even hold ale temperatures for long periods of time. The price for you to build this at home is gonna be highly dependent on what you have available in your area as far as used equipment goes. And also if you have some plywood laying around that you can use or old screws you can repurpose to really keep the cost down. Before we jump into this video, I wanna quickly shout out my channel members. So thank you so much for becoming a channel member. But anyway, guys, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into the glycol system DIY project. Before we get started, I'm assuming that you already have a fermenter that has the ability to run glycol through it with coils already installed. A lot of premium fermenters have these and you can also buy some cooling coils online and install these into any plastic fermenter as well. I'm also assuming that you have one Inkbird temperature controller for your fermenter to monitor temperature during fermentation as well. Okay, so let's first talk about what you'll need to get started. You'll need a window AC that works. The age of the equipment doesn't matter. I would highly recommend going on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, or just asking a family to see if they have one of these laying around. You'll also need a cooler. Again, this doesn't need to look pretty. I got this free as well. You'll also need some plywood, screws, and some scrap wood, and also caster wheels. I had everything besides the caster wheels, which I picked up at Home Depot. In addition, you'll need a dedicated inkbird controller for your glycol chiller and a submersible pump with some lines to run to the coils and also a return line to run back to your cooler. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is open up this AC unit. You wanna locate the front of the AC and figure out a way to open up the casing. What you're looking for is evaporation coils. If you are opening up a newer AC, they're gonna look like this. If you have an old AC like mine, then they're gonna look like mine. When it comes to opening up the AC, they're not built to be open, so it may take some creativity to open this up and expose the evaporation coils. So this is the hardest part of the entire project and the part that can break your air conditioner. Once you locate the evaporation coils in the front of your air conditioner, you need to loosen them up so you can bend the coolant line into your cooler. Every AC is gonna be different about where this is located and where you can make bends. For me, I had to raise the air conditioner about six inches to re reduce the amount of bends I needed. The goal here is to limit the amount of bends required to get the evaporation coils into the cooler. The reason why we wanna limit the amount of bends is because these coils don't like to be bent. So proceed with caution and go slow. If the line breaks and the coolant leaks, then the air conditioner is done. and You'll need to find a new air conditioner. You also don't need the front facing fan anymore since you're not worried about air passing through the coils. So if it's possible, remove the front facing fan as well. You can also take the time to adjust the dials on your air conditioner. For mine, I have the fan speed set to low to reduce noise and the power set to medium. Once the bends are all done, we need to do a final test to make sure we didn't break the air conditioner. Pour in some water in the cooler and turn on the air conditioner. After about 30 minutes, if you notice ice is starting to form in the cooler, that tells you you didn't break any of the lines while bending and we can proceed. Next, we can build a platform for this to sit on and move. Grab some at least half inch plywood and measure out how much space your equipment takes. You may need to build a spacer to set your AC on like mine as well. If you want to build a box around a platform like mine, then add around two inches of space on all sides. We also want to attach caster wheels. Don't put them all the way to the edge. You also may need to modify your cooler as well. I removed the lid and glued on some 2x4 to make a wood collar. I left a window in the collar for the evaporation coils to rest over the lid. Now get all the equipment together and we can run a final test with an inkbird. I just used water for mine, no glycol, and set my inkbird to hold around 38 to 40 degrees. Plug in the cooler to the cold side of the inkbird and then plug in the inkbird to the wall. Let this run for around 30 minutes to make sure that the AC and inkbird is working. Now we can hook up the submersible pump to the cold intake side on your cooling coils and connect a line from the hot end of the cooling coils and run a return line back into the cooler. 
you should connect the submersible pump to the inkbird that is controlling the beer temperature. So when the temperature hits a certain point, the inkbird will turn on the power to the pump and it will start pumping cold water through your coils. I let this run for about two hours with just water set to 38 degrees with my cooler. I was able to chill my fermenter down to 42 degrees. Now this is way overkill for lager fermentations, but I just wanted to see what water would do. If you already have glycol, then just use that. That way you can cool your cooler lower than freezing temperature. But I found that just using water is fine enough for lagering. At this point you have a functioning glycol chiller, but if you just like to make this a little bit more presentable, you can get some quarter inch plywood and just build a box around the platform. There's really only two things you need to consider when building a box. The first thing is that the AC needs airflow to cool the condenser coils which generate heat. The other consideration is you need to figure out a way to easily change out the water in your cooler. If you're just using water like me, then you need to change out the water more frequently since the water over time sitting in a cooler will get gross. I shoved some tubing into the cooler port and just connected a valve to it. That way I can drain this out when I need to. You can also drill holes for your ink bird, your cold line to your fermenter, and a hot return line back into your freezer. Lastly, I created a lid that will sit flush with the walls and I drilled more ventilation holes. Creating a box does make the system look a lot bigger than it actually is, but it does look a lot more presentable. You can also paint this if you want as well. But that about covers it for the DIY glycol chiller. If you liked the video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more DIY videos. I also have some other DIY videos on my channel, so make sure to check those out as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.